Good morning, gentlemen. Wonderful weather. It's raining outside. And I think I'll have a talk with you about what's happening in Ukraine. Because there have been momentous developments as far as Ukraine is concerned. Firstly, as you all know, the Russians had attacked Ukraine a year and a half back. And they committed a strategic error in the sense they thought it would be a limited military engagement and Ukraine would collapse. It didn't happen that way. And the first thrust failed and the Russians, we were close to Kiev and Kharkiv, had to retreat back. They regrouped and came back in the Donbass region. And here they did capture some 25 to 30 percent of the Ukrainian territory. But that they did it initially and now there's a stalemate. Now Ukraine has launched a counter-offensive, but that hasn't succeeded, that has failed in a way. And as far as my understanding goes and the reports which I received from my friends all over, for every one Russian killed, nine Ukrainian soldiers have died. With the result that Ukraine at the moment is short of manpower to fight the Russians. The Russians have an army, a standing army of almost 2 million and that is a very, very dangerous proposition as far as Ukraine is concerned. Now the problem with Ukraine is manifold. The Leopard tanks which were given by Germany, many of them have been lost and the Germans have refused to give any more replacement for the destroyed tanks. Many of the radar stations and the early warning systems of Ukraine have been destroyed by the Russians. So in effect, Ukraine is completely devastated. The once granary of Europe has ceased to exist. Now, this is a very dangerous situation as far as Ukraine is concerned because there's a good chance that the Ukrainian defenses could collapse at some point of time. And this is where the Americans are getting worried. Joe Biden in particular is very worried what's happening. And he's made his own devious plans. How far he succeeds, we'll have to see. But I'll tell you what his thinking is. He had recently dispatched sent his foreign secretary to China. Mr. Blinken went there, Anthony Blinken, and he had discussion with the Chinese leaders. Because the Rus Americans have been surprised as how the Russians, despite all the sanctions, are still fighting on. It's a mystery. So they have finally come to the conclusion that this is because of the past for the sophisticated weapons which the Russians are using being supplied by the Chinese. So Blinken's visit to China was to request China to stop this supply. At the same time, he held out a carrot for the Chinese. And what is that carrot? $600 billion a year of trade with America and a promise not to interfere with any war with the Chinese may launch. It's a very major pro proposition because the Chinese are also under tremendous pressure. I, I do not know, gentlemen, whether the Chinese will succumb to whatever the pressure of the Americans are. Now, Biden is desperate to show some victory in Ukraine because the elections are due 24. And if this stalemate continues and Ukraine collapses, then Biden will have to go home. So he's trying to avoid that. He wants to show that some sort of victory has come and this is the devious plan he's making. Now President Xi is also under pressure, tremendous pressure, because there are hardliners in his party who feel he's not doing enough. He's failed as far as the invasion of Taiwan is concerned. America, he has realized that if the Russians couldn't succeed in Ukraine, he himself will fail in Taiwan. But he also needs a quick victory somewhere to try and show that, well, I am a very powerful man to his people. You know. And there is a chance that he could make an adventure against India in the months of September, October. That's my analysis. And hope for a quick victory like they did in 1962. But they are scared that the Americans will come on the side of India 
And that is, I think, is the clue to the whole situation because Blinken, I think, has given some assurance that we will not intervene. This despite the fact that Modi had made a visit to America recently and a lot of agreements have been signed. They had put pressure on the Indians and the pressure was to break your relationship with Russia and then we'll be with you. Now that's the American way of doing things. But India cannot burn its bridges with Russia for the simple reason that Russia has been a long-standing ally for the last 40 years. That's number one. Number two, Russia has a tempering influence on China. And if you become the enemy of Russia, the Russians throw their hands up and the Chinese will have a free-for-all in Ladakh and other places. So India cannot afford to antagonize the Russians. It's a very catch-22 situation. I wonder if you gentlemen understand what a catch-22 situation is. Indians are in that. And the Americans are also in this catch-22 situation, so the Chinese. And the whole situation, I do not know how it's going to pan out because it's not something so simple. But the chances are that in next three months, if Ukraine collapses, all the American plans will go for a bunt. There's a good chance that Ukraine could collapse because the European Union now is extremely worried. Worried as to what is happening in Ukraine. They don't want to keep on fighting because they've got their own problems. Germany has gone into a recession and you know what's happening in France. The minority, the Muslims are writing left, right and center. There's been a curfew in 32 French cities and the French are studying how our good friend Yogi Adityanath is controlling UP. They're wondering how he's doing it and why we can't do it in France. So gentlemen, it's a catch-22 situation for February and Keep your ears and eyes open for my next video where I'll discuss more. As it stands, the Russians have the upper hand finally in Ukraine. That's what it looks to me. Americans are worried. They are trying to entice China to stop the support of Russia and holding a carrot for them. And the carrot is that we won't intervene if you attack somebody. And Chinese could attack India and think that they could win a quick victory. It's not going to happen that way. <laughs> so, gentlemen, the world is on the edge, on the precipice, and one small mistake could lead to a nuclear conflagration that will destroy the Western world. I will close now, gentlemen, and say goodbye. Do subscribe to my channel and come back for more. Jai Hind, glory to India. Take care of yourself. Share it with your friends. And I look forward to you listening to me again. Bye-bye and God bless.